we're starting to become more generalists, knowing more, each of us are knowing more about the full stack of what we're working with. And Artur is going to talk about that today, about the full stack, and in his blurb he talks about uh, everything, covering everything from uh, kernel to con continents. So please help me welcome Artur Bergman. Thank you, Steve. Is the, is the mic on? Okay. And are my slides up? Hi. I'm, uh, I'm really happy being back in Berlin. Uh, I really like this uh, city, and uh, it's good visiting Europe every now and then. So who am I? Uh, I used to work at Wikia, Six of Art, Live Journal, and a bunch of other places. I've done finance, I've done real-time stuff 12 years ago. Uh, I'm the founder of Fastly and, and CEO, and I, I like fast stuff. Like, things should be fast. Uh, I'm also kind of bitter, uh, and we'll get to that in a second. I want to cover one thing, honest and integrity. There is a dis disgusting lack of honesty in our industry. Vendors that lie, people that lie, technology that lies. And if you're an engineer, like, tell the truth. Like, don't lie. Don't sell your product on a lie. Um, and there are some examples of companies later that do that. So I'm bitter. Why am I bitter? Because no, nothing fucking works, right? Like, we have a stack that's built on shit. Thank you. Right, like, and mostly, mostly it's Friday night at 11. So I'll take you very quickly through an issue we had at Fastly. This is one of our slides, one of our graphs for load on one machine. Zoom in, you see the load spikes, zoom in some more, and you go like, that's a really bad load spike. And you go like, why? You look at the memory usage, looks like that. And you look at that, and you go, what the fuck? Like, you just evicted 10 gigs from the page cache? Why would it do that? Right? And so, welcome to Linux. I'm also very happy with just what it does to interactive performance. Admittedly, my test case is really trivial. Reading email in a web browser, scrolling around a bit, while doing a make-j64 on the kernel at the same time. But it is a test case that is very relevant for me and is a huge improvement. Linus Torvalds. This is the guy who controls our kernel and our operating system. It is developed for desktops, and it's used in servers, right? And the, it's an ecosystem of tools around it developed for desktops. And so we have two vendors, basically. We have Red Hat and Ubuntu. Red Hat is often enterprise land. They don't care about large-scale web performance. If they did, they would have a sane licensing and, and uh, actual like, up-to-date software. And Ubuntu, they've gone off the fucking like, reservoir. Like, Juju, like, what the fuck are they doing? Like, upstart? You shipped upstart in a LTS when it's buggy? Like, and you removed restart? Or you made restart not work as it should? Like, what the fuck? Right? And, and this is dangerous, because there's actually right now no vendor for uh, like a clustered Linux that, that is what kind of stuff that we want to use in the data center. Like, that vendor doesn't exist. So Linux has this wonderful thing called NUMA support, right? Whoever wrote it, like he should, I want to print a sticker that says, You're not allowed to, I'm not allowed to touch a computer again in a programming fashion. Whoever did NUMA like, should not be allowed to touch a computer or in a programming fashion. Right? So there's this setting called zone reclaim mode. So if it's set to, to one, instead of, of using memory that's free, it will pause the app for 100 millisecond and swap slash evict memory from the, from the area it has. And uh, it used to be that it was turned off, and on the latest Intels, because they changed new new architecture, uh, it's suddenly on. Like, why would you ever fucking swap when there is free memory, like, by default? I, there may be our use cases, but, but, like, the penalty for a memory miss to, on a NUMA is, like, I don't know, 10 orders of magnitude better than disk? 20? So, NUMA stupidity. Solve it by adding NUMA control into leave. Reclaim mode is zero. 
uh, and then compact memory for good of it. So then we discovered that we actually just made a false assumption. Like, it wasn't an entirely false assumption because reclaim mode was stupid and did cause other problems. It did not cause the load spikes. So we didn't really correlate uh, the graphs correctly. Now, correlation is not causation. And when an ops person tells me that or a dev engineer tells me that, I kind of want to punch them. Right? Like, events not necessarily correlate, but they tend to be, like, related. And, you know, if there's a fire, there's an arsonist. Like, yes, it is in correlation. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> right? So we, have, we track about 650 metrics per machine. And those are not application-level metrics. This is stuff that we get from the kernel. And what's fantastic about that is that you see like, some graph going haywire. You go and look up the, you Google for what that metrics means, and there's two hits. There is the guy who submitted a patch and the guy who applied the patch. And that's it. And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> and so now you have to go read Linux kernel source to figure out what that actually means. So end up using latency top. Who here knows about latency top? Okay, rather you should. It's a fantastic tool. It will tell you what's slow with the machine. It's coupled with PowerTop, um, which apparently cell phone mobile app developers use a lot because it tells you what wakes the machine up. It will tell you what's waking your app up. Latency top is fantastic. So we see here that we're spending time mapping memory and sleep on page. So what is load? It is processes on the run queue waiting to execute. Right? And they can wait for, for I.O. or CPU, or for, or for the kernel to return. It's a completely misunderstood value. Like it, you can have like mount an NFS volume, open 1,000 file handles, try reading, kill the NFS. You have a load of 1,000 and your machine is idle. Right? So we started looking at memory. This is uh, SAR B1. Notice that like, the VM efficiency there is pretty, pretty low. And we're evicting a law, we're scanning a million pages to evict 7,000 pages. Oh, what the fuck? Read a bit more, see how like, it suddenly drops for no reason. We're 79% and it decides to evict. So uh, it's something called congested mode in Linux. You can tune it, you can kind of fix it. These are the, these are the kind of settings that help it somewhat. Um, and since I have many slides, I will skip that. So are we done now? Like, no, we're not. Like, you've, we think we're done. And if we're normal people, we might say we're done. But if we say we're done, we suck, right? Because we don't actually understand what's going on. We just fixed it with some magic values. If you don't understand why something is happening, you can't fix it. And if you didn't fix it, it ain't fixed. Like, computers are deterministic state machines. Like, what we tell them to do is actually what they end up doing. There's no magic, right? Like, there is nothing magic about a computer. There's n bar solar flares, I guess. But like, <laughs> we have ECC memory for that, right? Like, generally, if there's a bug, it is because something you did or someone else did that caused it, right? So it's up to you to find that bug and fix it. And if you, can't, if you don't know what the bug is, you can't actually fix it. And if you don't fix it, like, they don't go away by themselves. They do sometimes, but we try to not think about that. <laughs> so that didn't actually fix the problem. The load spikes continue. Our 95th percentile started going bad. The machine is doing 5,000 requests per second. It's still fucking idle. And you're like, what, did, what now? Time to read the kernel source. Notice that SPRK memmap grabs a write lock. Paging takes a read lock. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty horrid when you're doing about 100,000 minor page faults and 10,000 major page faults a second. Get rid of that. Allocate a terabyte of RAM. Upgrade J malloc. No luck. Time to figure out where the memmap is. Time to read glibc source code. Like, this is like how you find a problem. Like, and this is one of the wonderful things about open source. Like, there's lots of shit about open source, um, most notably code quality and uh, uh, stupid user groups and bad design and shit like that. But, but the good thing is you can actually dig down and find it. Right? Like, you can go all the way down to the network driver, to the, to the SCSI driver, whatever, and find what's going on with your system. 
So it turns out that glibc memmaps the setter host. So every time you need to find out which like your host name is, basically memmaps, stop sold paging, woohoo. Like, that is a micro optimization that kills the performance of the entire system. So we just commented that out and things were much faster. <laughs> right? Like we also run a kernel where fsync is commented out. <laughs> Turns out if you run a cache server, that's fine. Unlike if you run a database. <laughs> so the conclusion is that Linux is broken and undocumented. That's not actually true. It is. But it's really like you need to understand the system. Like you need to understand what you're running. And even though, yeah, it's broken, it's undocumented, like it's up to you to, to, to work around that. And that's kind of maybe horrible, but it is still up to you. So otherwise, this happens. Like I was talking to this Y Combinator guy, and he goes, like, Yeah, the site is slow, I need to shard. And I go, like, Why do you need to shard? And he's like, Because the site is slow. I'm like, no, that doesn't work like that. Why is the site slow? Because we're not sharded. You're like, what the fuck? And then I go, like, no, 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 why is it slow? And he goes, oh, because we're using joins. So I'm like, OK, why are joins slow? A question that nearly very few people seem to be able to answer. Um, and, and he goes, because joins make it hard to shard. And I'm like, seriously? Like, you, you don't know? And then I ask him about his data amount. He said it's like 20 gigabytes of data. My iPhone holds 20 gigs of data. <laughs> grab, will grab through it in like no time. Right? Like, there is no point in sharding, right? So any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Any technology that's indistinguishable from magic for you is one you don't understand, <laughs> right? Because magic doesn't exist. It's, it's an illusion. It's an illusion you sometimes want and sometimes hope is there, but it is an illusion. It's an abstraction. And if you don't understand your stack, you'll fix problems at the wrong level, and that is the primary source of complexity, right? Like, if you don't fix it at the right level, you end up buying tremendously expensive SAN systems because, like, a small fix to the database layer was never, like, considered. Or you spend five years re-engineering your database system when you could have spent $100,000 on a SAN. But, like, either way, you need to understand where the bottleneck is. You need to understand the system. So we have some examples of, mag of magic, right? So MongoDB. It's shit. Like, it is just fucking shit. And talk about integrity, right? Like, they lie on their fucking website. Like, my ISEM is more reliable than, than, um, than Mongo, right? And, and works, actually, when you run out of memory. Um, that said, there might be places where Mongo is appropriate. I can't really think of any, but I'm sure there are. But there are, there are only if you actually know what the trade-offs are to give you that magic, right? Like, if you're caching, Mongo should work fine. Just wipe the database when you boot up, right? So that requires basic understanding of how computers work, which seems to be something that people don't know anymore, right? Like, yeah, well, whatever, hard drives don't, they just, yeah, what the fuck. Then uh, with Mongo, though, like, if anyone ever wants to defend building a database that gets slower with longer column names, like, come up on stage and I'll, like, obliterate you. Like, there's Redis. It's an outsourced heap. Like, how hard is it to write a single threaded memory database? Like, it is not hard, right? And then I see people wanting to embed Redis. And I'm like, no, wh why would you do that? To use the data structures. Just use the fucking data structures. You're a programmer, you can write them, or you can use a library that, that implements them. Like, and it's single threaded. There's Node, which is like, I like it, I use it. It's fucking shit. It's written, like, I, Ryan, I, Ryan Cantrell, I'm sorry, like Ryan does not understand computers, right? Read buffer.c. This is the worst fucking memory allocator you can write, right? Like one byte for every 8K pool will not free that pool. There's Couchbase, which does good products, but on integrity and honesty, don't fucking call me and tell me you invented memcache. I worked at LiveJournal, right? Brad invented it, Ava wrote it. Don't tell me I need a license. Also, like, generally. There's mobster behavior. I get this email. Your continued success of Wikia. Right? While researching Wikia, I felt compelled. Compelled. Under gun threat, I guess. Like, what the fuck? And then you offer 100%, uh, the true 100% uptime. That does not actually exist. There's AWS. Like, JJ, like, fix your fucking thing. Like, a bad, like, a network, I understand, should not always be reliable. 
Yours is more unreliable than like anything I would ever expect, right? I tested a $60,000 machine that is 1,200 times faster than an M1 small, 24,000 times faster than an M1 micro, right? And so that, that you know, throws everything that's uh, single-threaded. So scaling out, we used to do it. Uh, what happens is this. Netflix is fucking slow. Adrian can say whatever he wants. Like, their servers take forever to respond. So scale out. Like, hardware is fantastic. If you do work hard on it, you get this, right? Like, time to first byte over 60 seconds. On the 99th percentile, we have 1.1 millisecond. So when magic fails, if you really believe in it, if you trust the magic, you're screwed because you don't know how to fix it. One example of real magic is SSDs. Like, they actually, like, kind of came from nowhere and fixed a lot of problems for us. So who here does not use an SSD? OK, why the fuck not? Like, your life will be so much easier for your desktop and your servers. There is no reason not to use them. Like, a $5,000 system can get 2.5 gigabytes per second of random writes, basically, for a $10,000 system. Like, we sharded because we couldn't get that kind of write performance. So this is my car. Uh, it's an ops car. Uh, John actually came up with this uh, analogy. It's easy to understand. It's easy to fix. It's easy to modify. And that's what you want out of your systems. Like if you get stuck in Death Valley in a Porsche Cayenne, some Porsche dealer has to come and fix it. In Jeep, you just fucking fix it yourself. So distributed systems. When, you, when I say that, people think about databases, message queues, gossip protocols, server side. And we have the fallacies of distributed computing, right? So I would like to welcome front-end developers to the distributed systems developers. Like, Facebook is probably the world's largest compute cluster if you count every single connected client. And it is a vast distributed storage, right? And so the fallacies apply. Like, latency isn't zero. Bandwidth isn't unlimited. Like, as you, if you're writing a JavaScript app, as, as Theo pointed out earlier, like, your app goes to the edge, which means you are a distributed systems developer, which means you should go and read up on system, system, um, distributed systems. So I sell magic. Uh, it's hard because we don't want to lie. Uh, we beat the speed of light. We don't really speed, beat the speed of light. Uh, so we fake it, uh, which appears like magic, and we try to you know, show you how the magic is done. But like, and that's part of the important. Magic is good. Um, like Cheating is good as long as you know what you're doing, as long as you know the trade-offs. So if you want more about Fastly, then go to fastly.com and sign up. Otherwise, thank you.